Good evening. This 62nd meeting of the 72nd term of the Baltimore City is Council is now called to order. Please turn off all cell phones or put them on vibrate. Tonight's invocation will be led by Pastor Bonnie McCubbin of Good Shepherd United Methodist Church. Immediately following the prayer, we will have the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. Good evening. I am honored to be here tonight representing the Congregation of Good Shepherd United Methodist Church and the Hamden neighborhood. I appreciate the invitation of Councilwoman Mary Pat Clark. At this time, I invite all who wish to participate in prayer to join me in these words addressed to God. God of many names, Almighty Creator, Allah, Lord, Abba, Mother, Father, God. We come before you this evening representing a variety of faiths, neighborhoods, districts, and interests, but united as women and men, people dedicated to making our city a better place for all who live, work, worship, and play here. As we do the business that is before us tonight, as we look at the sometimes boring but always important issues of budgeting and financing for our city, our taxes, our schools, our police, as we examine our zoning and land use, as we try to minimize our impact on this earth by the reduction of single-use plastic bags, we are humbled to serve as a voice for our communities. As we listen not only with our ears but with our hearts, may we be a discerning voice and presence for our communities and neighborhoods. There are no easy answers. Help us to be moved to action and not paralyzed by fear. Lord, part the seas of discontent and make a way where there seems to be no way, especially with our computers. We lift, you up by, uh, we lift up to you by name our mayor, Jack Young, and our city council, Zeke, Danielle, Ryan, Bill, Yitzi, Sharon, Leon, Christopher, John, Edward, Eric, Robert, Shannon, and Mary Pat. Guide each one of them by principles and morals greater than any one of us so that this city council can make decisions for the good of all Baltimoreans. Where we are divided, grace us with a unity of spirit to strive for good so that your will may be done. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, ruler of the universe. Amen and amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Showcase Baltimore. Tonight's Showcase Baltimore presenter is Dr. Tracy Bell from the University of Maryland School of Medicine. Thank you, President Scott, and thank you for the invitation from Mayor Young's office to do the showcase this evening. Um, thank you for all for your attention and for that great invocation to get us started tonight. Uh, my name is Tracy Bell. I'm a neuroscientist and professor at the University of Maryland School of Medicine and the director of the Center for Epigenetic Research in Child Health and Brain Development. <clears throat> I am a neuroscientist focused on the impact of trauma and stress on the developing and maturing child's brain. <clears throat> you do not have to go far in the city of Baltimore to question yourself, I would imagine, as to what impact all of the trauma and stressors in this environment are having on our young children. Our research in my lab is focused on understanding the biological mechanisms behind trauma and the effects on the child's brain, including and importantly identifying the biological mechanisms of the perceived stress of racism and its intergenerational effects that it's having on our kids. In my recruitment last year from the University of Pennsylvania to the University of Maryland School of Medicine, and, and the ability to develop this center that I am the director of, I saw an incredible opportunity in this community to engage with the community and to begin to understand the mechanisms by which the trauma and stress produce lasting effects on our children's brains. As seen in Charm City, and I know as a focus of this council, including President Scott and Mayor Young's office, we know that the escalation or the de-escalation that we work toward resolving violence and the importance, the incredible importance of investing in our children's education cannot go unsaid. As you may be aware, adverse childhood events are known as ACEs, and these were developed by Kaiser Permanente in the 70s in California and are the strongest predictor we have of lifetime, lifetime health and disease. The national average of ACEs in pregnant women, if you look at and are, are numbered numerically from one to four or more, the national average for pregnant women for the adverse childhood events that they experienced 
they experienced prior to their pregnancy, so in their childhood, is somewhere between one and two, with most pregnant women that have experienced four or more on a national average being around 10%. In the city of Baltimore, the national average, sorry, in comparison to the national average, in the city of Baltimore, pregnant women experiencing four or more ACEs is nearing 50%. <clears throat> As almost half of our pregnant women giving birth to our next generation have themselves experienced what healthcare providers call the highest level of trauma known to impact health and disease, we cannot forget not just our children, but this next generation being born. So while we can't change the environment, at least the center that I work with cannot change our environment, we are decided to work with one elementary school at a time. We are starting with Callaway Elementary, which is in Councilwoman Middleton's sixth district in Park Heights area. And we are teaching the kids about science and the brain, the impact of how stress in their environment affects them. And through a partnership, and this is the amazing part of Baltimore, through a partnership, which is incredibly unique with Baltimore artist, uh, Jay Wolf Schlossberg Cohen, many of you know him, and using the power of art to convey and reinforce the positive benefits and lifetime success predictor of a simple message of reading. Because who wants to go home every day knowing the negative message of the environment on your brain or your kid's brain? What is a positive message? It's reading. Reading is a very simple message. It relieves stress. We all know that. You lose yourself in a book. It relieves stress. It builds relationships. What are the best memories you have with your kids when they were young? Reading with them, sharing those stories. It's a lifetime predictor for success for education, job, financial success. It's also the most simple positive message that we can give to these families to implement in their homes. It's something that they can do, something that they have control of. It works towards stress resolution. It lowers escalation toward violence. Imagine if we could replace every gun with a book. This program we've developed works with the kids, it works with their families, it works with the school staff and administration, and the community. Our message is put down the phone, pick up a book, grab your kid, 15 minutes. 15 minutes can impart incredible success on lifetime health, and, a success, and success, for these, success for these kids. So the culmination of this program that we've been doing for the past year in this one elementary school is a result of this, both the school and the community working on the brain, the importance of the brain, and the value of reading will culminate in a giant outside mural on the wall of this school. And this is not a mural where the artist comes in and just paints his message. This is art from the kids, and you'll see all in the reading on the brain brochure that we've handed out. There are pictures included in there. We had a, a, a painting day at the end of the school year where every kid in that school, every kid in Callaway, every administrator, every teacher got their hands on this mural on all of the panels. These panels will now be put up on the outside of the school, which will last 100 years. It will weather all of the determinants in this environment. It is very clear, you can see from some of those photos, the mayor himself participated in painting. I will highlight, although I don't think we included that picture, that the mayor did get actual paint, orange paint, on his sports coat that day. Channel 2 ABC News came to the school and videoed the kids and the mayor painting on this mural, the incredible message of the importance of the environment on their brains. And what the kids have learned, and I will tell you, when the ABC News anchor interviewed one of our fourth graders, and said, tell me what you've learned. And he said, and I quote, my hippocampus is important for learning. This is a fourth grader. The jaw dropped in this newscaster. My hippocampus is important for learning. And when things are bad in my neighborhood, I know I can grab my cousin and go in my room and we can read a book and we feel a lot better. Fourth grader. So this is our plan. We have, donated, we have committed to Callaway Elementary School for three years, three years because you cannot go in in one year and expect the differences to be maintained. So we're doing three years at Callaway. The program has now been developed. We hope to move on to other schools. What we need now is to figure out the raising of funds, of course, to keep this program going because, of course, the artist himself and his time, the science that we do with the kids and the program over the year costs money. So thank you for your time. Thank you. The clerk will call the roll of the members. 
President Scott, Cohen, McRae, Dorsey, Henry, Schleifer, Middleton, Pinkett, Burnett, Bullock, Reisinger, Costello, Stokes, Sneed, Clark. Mr. President, we have a quorum. Bills signed by the mayor can be found on pages two through five of the agenda. Bills to be introduced. City Council Bill 190397, repeal of Ordinance 03613, University of Maryland Biopark Planned Unit Development. For the purpose of repealing Ordinance 03613 as amended by Ordinance 11477, which designated certain properties as a business planned unit development known as University of Maryland Biopark and providing for a special effective date. Sponsors, President Scott Bullock. This has been assigned to the Land Use and Transportation Committee. City Council Bill 190398, Urban Renewal Poppleton Amendment. For the purpose of amending the Urban Renewal Plan for Poppleton to modify the boundaries of the renewal plan to remove certain properties, to revise certain exhibits to the plan to reflect the change in the boundaries and to delete a certain exhibit, and to conform, clarify, or correct certain references in the plan, waiving certain content and procedural requirements, making the provisions of this ordinance severable, providing for the application of this ordinance in conjunction with certain other ordinances and providing for a special effective date. Sponsors, President Scott Bullock. This has been assigned to the Housing and Urban Affairs Committee. City Council Bill 190399, rezoning 755, 757, 759, 761, and 763 West Fayette Street, 760 West Baltimore Street, Block 0626, Lot 053, known as Northwest Corner, Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard and West Baltimore Street, and a, former portion, a portion of the former bed of West Fairmont Avenue. For the purpose of changing the zoning for the properties known as 755, 757, 759, 761, and 763 West Fayette Street, Block 0626, Lot 053, known as Northwest Corner of Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard and West Baltimore Street, and a portion of the former bed of West Fairmont Avenue, as outlined in red on the accompanying plat from the R8 Zoning District to the BSC Zoning District. Sponsors, President Scott. This has been assigned to the Land Use and Transportation Committee. City Council Bill 190400, Zoning Conditional Use Parking Lot, 301 East Lombard Street. For, also known as 300 East Pratt Street. For the purpose of reauthorizing and continuing the permission for subject to certain conditions, the establishment, maintenance, and operation of an open off-street parking area on the property known as 301 East Lombard Street, also known as 300 East Pratt Street, block 1381, lot 002, as outlined in red on the accompanying plat and providing for a special effective date. Sponsor Costello. This has been assigned to the Land Use and Transportation Committee. City Council Bill 190401, Comprehensive Bag Reduction. For the purpose of repealing the plastic bag reduction program, prohibiting certain dealers from supplying customers with plastic bags for use as checkout bags, authorizing certain exemptions, defining certain terms, imposing certain civil and criminal penalties, imposing a surcharge on checkout bags supplied by dealers to certain customers, and providing for special effective date. Effective dates. Sponsors Henry, Dorsey, Bullock, Sneed, Burnett, Clark. Please add uh, Council President Scott as a co-sponsor, Councilman Cohen as a co-sponsor. Chair recognizes Councilwoman Middleton as a Vice President Middleton as a co-sponsor. Chair recognizes Councilman Henry. Thank you, Mr. President. This bill is about making Baltimore City cleaner, greener, and more sustainable. Uh, this bill is about behavioral modification. This bill is about encouraging Baltimoreans to return to a culture of using reusable bags when we're shopping. Uh, the bill will prohibit dealers from giving out plastic bags at checkout. It will charge a very modest fee of five cents for each paper or compostable bag that is disposable that is given out at checkout to encourage customers to think about whether they actually need that bag or not. Um, if you are low income and you are receiving some type of assistance for food from the government, you will not be charged that fee. If uh, you are a store that is going to be eliminating plastic bags and only giving out paper bags, you will keep one cent of the five cent fee to help you deal with the additional overhead. And we here in Baltimore City, when we receive the rest of that fee, the expectation is that we will use some of that to purchase 
reusable bags that we can make available for free to those of our constituents who are not able to pay 99 cents to get their own. Uh, one of Councilman Cohen's constituents was kind enough to show me an example of a more elaborate reusable bag than uh, any of the ones that are in my trunk right now. Uh, as many of you know, there are reusable bag giveaways being done constantly by different organizations. I believe <coughs> Councilman Burnett is going to be doing one in his district soon enough. I would ask that we would all try to do that as well. Um, on the heels of Councilman Bullock's styrofoam ban and the state's styrofoam ban, Baltimore City and Maryland are clearly on the path to being more sustainable, eliminating litter, and as we talked about <laughs> earlier this year, reducing the impact of the waste stream on our own landfill. If we're concerned about incineration and use of the landfill, we should be concerned about how much trash we're just volunteering, voluntarily allowing ourselves to add into that waste stream. So I want to thank my co-sponsors for their support on this legislation. I would like to thank the advocates in the coalition who have worked with us for many months to work out the details of this. And I look forward to um, an open and transparent discussion in the Judiciary and Legislative Investigations Committee. Thank you. Thank you. you. Please note uh, Councilman Reisinger as a co-sponsor. This has been assigned to the Judiciary and Legislative Investigations Committee. You can find the consent calendar in Section A at the back of the agenda. Is there a motion to approve the consent calendar? Moved by Councilman Henry, second by Councilman Dorsey. All those in favor of approving the consent calendar say aye. Those opposed say nay. The motion carry and this calendar is approved. We will now move to bills on second reader, budget and appropriations. Chair recognizes Councilman Costello. Thank you, Mr. President. Move to read short titles on second reader. Second by Councilman Henry. All those in favor of reading short titles for remaining in the meeting say aye. Those opposed, thank you. Short titles for remainder in the meeting. Uh, second read of bills, we are at Budget and Appropriations Committee. City Council Bill 190358, Children and Youth Fund, Interim Governance and Administration, One Year Extension. Chair recognizes Councilman Costello. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. We held a hearing on this bill on uh, last Thursday. I move the bill favorably. Second by Councilman Pinkett. All those in favor of approving this bill say aye. Aye. Those opposed say nay. The motion approved. This bill moves to third reader. City Council Bill 190393, Supplementary General Fund Operating Appropriation, Department of Public Works, $1,500,000. Chair recognizes Councilman Costello. Thank you, Mr. President. We held uh, hearings for all four of the supplementary appropriations uh, last Thursday as part of our agreement uh, to hold expedited hearings for these as part of fiscal year 2019 closeout uh, with the administration. Uh, at this time, I move the bill favorably. Second by Councilman Pinkett. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed say nay. The motion approved. This bill moves to the third reader. City Council Bill 190394, Supplementary General Fund Operating Appropriation, Police Department, $5 million. Chair recognizes Councilman Costello. Thank you, Mr. President. I move the bill favorably. Second by Councilman Pinkett. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed say nay. Please note Councilman Dorsey as a nay. The motion is approved. This bill moves to third reader. City Council Bill 190395, Supplementary General Fund Operating Appropriation, Fire Department, $7 million. Chair recognizes Councilman Costello. Thank you, Mr. President. I move the bill favorably. Second by Councilman Pinkett. All those in favor say aye. Those opposed say nay. The motion is approved. This bill moves to third reason. City Council Bill 190396, Supplementary General Fund Operating Appropriation, Department of Transportation, $10 million. Chair recognizes Councilman Costello. Thank you, Mr. President. I move the bill favorably. Second by Councilman Pinkett. All those in favor of approving this bill say aye. Those opposed say nay. The motion is approved. This bill moves to the third reader. Land use and transportation. City Council Bill 190322, rezoning 1818 East Pratt Street. Chair recognizes Councilman Reisinger. 
Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Mr. President, I move the finding of facts. Second by Councilwoman Snead. All those in favor of approving the finding of fact, say aye. Aye. Those opposed say nay. The motion to approve the finding of fact are adopted. Chair recognizes Councilman Reisinger. I move the bill favorable. Second by Councilwoman Snead. All those in favor of approving this bill say aye. Aye. Those opposed say nay. The motion is approved. This bill moves to third reader. City Council Bill 190333, rezoning 801 to 803 North Chester Street. Ch Chair recognizes Councilman Reisinger. Move the finding of facts. Second by Councilwoman Snead. All those in favor of approving the findings of facts say aye. Aye. All those in favor of approving the findings of facts say aye. Aye. Those opposed say nay. The motion to approve the findings and facts are adopted. Chair recognizes Councilman Reisinger. Move the bill favorable. Second by Councilwoman Sneed. All those in, proven, in favor of approving this bill say aye. Aye. Those opposed say nay. The motion approved. This bill moves to third reader. City Council Bill 190349, conditional use conversion of a single family dwelling unit to two dwelling units in the R8 zoning district, variance 2029 East Lombard Street. Chair recognizes Councilman Reisinger. Move finding of facts. Second by Councilwoman Sneed. All those in favor of approving the findings and facts say aye. Aye. All those in favor of approving the findings and facts say aye. Aye. Those opposed say nay. The motion to approve the findings and facts are adopted. Chair recognizes Councilman Reisinger. Move the bill favorable. Second by Councilwoman Sneed. All those in favor of approving this bill say aye. Aye. Those opposed say nay. The motion is approved. This bill moves to third reader. Taxation, Finance, and Economic Development. City Council Bill 190326, sale of property, air rights area over a portion of the public right of way of the 4100 block of Hill and Road. Chair recognizes Vice President Milton. Thank you, Mr. President. This bill was heard on May 16th, 2019, uh, sponsored by the Council President on behalf of the administration. The committee approved the bill as favorable. I move the bill with a favorable report. Second by Councilman Dorsey. All those in favor of approving this bill say aye. Aye. Those opposed say nay. The motion approved. This bill moves to third reader. City Council Bill 190343, Minority and Women's Business Program Interim Extension. Chair recognizes Council Vice President Milton. Thank you, Mr. President. The bill was heard on June 13th, 2019. Sponsored by uh, City Council President on behalf of the administration. The committee approved the bill as favorable. I move the bill with a favorable report. Second by Councilwoman McCray. All those in favor of approving this bill say aye. aye. Those opposed say nay. Uh, please note the president abstains. The motion is approved. This bill moves to third reader. Committee announcements. Chair recognizes Councilman Bullock. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, the Housing and Urban Affairs Committee will be uh, having a hearing on Tuesday, July uh, 9th at 3.30 p.m. The first bill will be City Council Bill 190317, City Streets opening a portion of a three-foot alley. That will be followed at 3.35 p.m. on the same day for City Council Bill 190318, uh, which is City Streets closing West Fairmount Avenue, 10-foot alley, a portion of Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard, and a portion of a three-foot alley. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Chair recognizes Councilwoman Sneed. Uh, the Labor Committee will actually hold a hearing on Thursday, July 18, 2019, for the purpose of holding a legislative oversight hearing to have Baltimore City Fire Department update the committee on staffing, promotional practices, and internal secession and an internal secession plan. Chair recognizes Councilman Costello. Thank you, Mr. President. Judiciary and Legislative Investigations Committee will hold two hearings on Wednesday, July 17th, starting at 5 p.m. Uh, the first is Legislative Oversight 19-0051, Legislative Oversight Alley Cleaning, Grass Cutting, and Boarding at Department of Public Works at the request of Council President Scott. Uh, we also hold a hearing on bill at the same date and time uh, on Bill 19-0136R informational hearing on street sweeping at the request of Councilman Pinkett. Both of these hearings will be televised on Charm TV. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Committee announcements. Council Vice President Middleton. Thank you, Mr. President. Taxation, Finance, and Economic, Economic Development Committee will hear um, 
will have a committee hearing and a committee work session. The hearing will be held first, and that's bill number 190319, held on Thursday, July 25th, 2019, at 10 a.m. here in council chambers, and it's the sale of property, former bed of West Fairmont Avenue, a 10-foot alley, a portion of Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard, and a portion of a three-foot alley. And we will have our first committee work session um, with bill number 18-0307, Thursday, July 25th, 2019, at 1010 here in 1010 a.m. here in Council Chambers. And it's the work session for the Water Accountability and Equity Act. Committee announcements. Any more committee announcements on the side? Regular announcements. Chair recognizes Councilwoman Sneed. So on June 19, 1953, the Baltimore City Board of Fire Commissioners voted to open the fire department's entry-level application process to African-American candidates. This week, we're celebrating the 66th anniversary of that decision, and we recognize the men who made history as the first black firefighters to enter the Baltimore City Fire Department. Now, while we celebrate the landmark achievement, we must also remind, be reminded that it was the same board of the fire commissioners and members of the Silver Service Commission that for decades have refused to appoint black applicants into the, the department. Their names were conveniently designated in red ink by the Civil Service Commission and skipped over on the list of eligible applicants. And if it wasn't until 1987, some 34 years later, when Ms. Andre McFarlane became the first female firefighter in the history of the fire department. As we continue to move this city forward, we must be aware of the past and not only work to address the systematic issues faced by our residents, but also those experienced by city employees. And as we look at the progress being made in neighborhood, neighboring jurisdictions, we where women have been appointed to the fire chief in Anne Arundel County, Baltimore County, and Howard County, yet no woman has ever risen through the ranks to be promoted to a command staff position within Baltimore City Fire Department. That issue should raise a cause for concern to all of us. So that's why we're holding the Labor Committee of uh, Legislative Oversight hearing uh, to examine those exact uh, issues that we're experiencing now. Thank you, Council President. Thank you. Uh, uh, before we go any further, Madam Vice President, I would like to, you to ask for a moment of silence for Councilman Donald J. Hammond, who passed away. Uh, Councilman Hammond is also the father of uh, Pete Hammond, former delegate Pete Hammond. He replaced one then Councilwoman Barbara Mikulski on the council, uh, was an activist in southeast Baltimore fighting against what we now know as the connecting of Interstate 70 and I-95 in, in southeast Baltimore that Councilman Cohen now represents. And he had the unique distinction of also attending both what we now know as Loyola University and Morgan State University. So please honor a moment of silence for him in addition to the now 143 people that we have lost to homicides and all of those we have lost to the opioid crisis as well. Regular announcements on this side, Councilwoman Clark. I just want to thank you, Mr. President, for honoring uh, Donald Hammond the way you just have by, by speaking from the podium in his honor. I served with him, he was, I sat right behind him. Well, we were on that side in those days. Um, I've, I've gone left since then, um, <laughs> if that's possible. And um, I just want to say that some people rush and embrace life. Councilman Hammond, he just savored it. And he would talk with you about stories of, of history which he knew everything that ever happened in Baltimore, and politics, lots of stories we don't always tell each other, uh, but that he did in quiet times and quiet places. Thank you for honoring him. He was a wonderful councilman and a wonderful, wonderful man. Thank you. Councilman Dorsey. Thank you, Mr. Council President. Um, I went and stood in front of the Joseph Meyerhoff Symphony Hall earlier today with Baltimore Symphony Orchestra musicians who are experiencing, uh, I don't think that un unfortunate does it the justice that it deserves. Um, I think something that's really tragic for Baltimore that 
um, and one of our oldest institutions here as a city, is really under the threat of being downgraded to uh, really a second, a second tier status. As everybody here has heard me uh, mention before, the, the, Sim the Baltimore Symphony Orchestra uh, is not only a world-class symphony orchestra, which has a real distinction to it, um, that it's able to attract the kind of musicians that other orchestras are not able to attract, that it's able to actually perform repertoire that other orchestras cannot perform, not just because of the quality of their musicians, but because of the size of their ensemble. Um, and, uh, and beyond that, it has the distinction of being the only world-class symphony orchestra in the United States that was originally established as a governmental entity. The threat to that status as a world-class symphony orchestra should give pause to all of us who represent Baltimore City, that this is something that is uh, part of our legacy. It's part of the fabric of what makes Baltimore City what it is. Um, and. And with that, I want to, you know, draw attention to the, the fact that, that organizations like this rely on uh, not just public so support, but private support. That there are benefactors that support organizations like this, and often they make, or typically they make up, the board membership that, uh, that is the directorship of such organizations. And I think that, um, that when such venerable institutions uh, appoint members or accept members as their board membership uh, that they should ensure that those people uh, respect and understand the duty that they have to these organizations to ensure that they remain funded. Um, and it's, you know, while it's nice to support organizations like or kids to show that the organization is really uh, concerned with youth, I have to take issue with whether or not those youth then believe that there's any career path potential for them if we don't support the adults in that career path for them to have a future, which is fundamentally one of the problems that we face here as a city, is that youth have too little potential to grow into adults with real job opportunity in the city and in the region. And so I wanna, I wanna draw attention to that specifically, as well as the threat to organized labor that the members of the organization, the members that actually perform the music, whose salaries make up less than half of the overall budget of that organization, are affiliates of the AFL-CIO, and what happens when we fail organized labor as a city and as a community. So I just wanna remind everybody of the real threat that uh, exists to one of the most important cultural institutions here in Baltimore City and in the Baltimore metropolitan region. Thank you, Mr. Council President. Thank you. Chair recognizes Councilman Cohen. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, this weekend, we signed the single stall gender restroom, uh, gender inclusive restroom legislation at the Pride Parade. It's the first time we've ever signed a bill at Pride. And so I want to thank you and all of our colleagues for their co-sponsorship, for supporting it, for being there. Uh, I want to thank Mr. Amaros from, the, um, from your office, uh, as well as Stephanie from my staff and all the people that worked really hard on this bill, but also just want to lift up the leadership of trans and non-binary folks that were the driving force behind this legislation. They have too often been shut out of the chambers of power in cities like Baltimore, and to see uh, Jabari, to see the LGBTQ Commission, to see folks like Ava Pipitone and Jamie and all the rest, uh, work together and get this win was incredibly heartening for me and I think for our city. And so again, thank you for your support. Um, and let's continue to push for people whose voices have not always been heard in our city. Thank you. And before I recognize the vice president, I want to take time to uh, recognize that this is the gentleman in control of the microphones, Mr. Hosea Chu's last day uh, with us on the city council. He'll be moving to uh, office on the second floor permanently, so he will no longer be in charge of your voices and whether everyone can hear you. So just want to say thank you, Hosea, for all of your hard work. <laughs> but I'm sure he still will be watching all of your budgets from afar, so don't get too out of control. 
chair recognizes Council Vice President Middleton. Thank you, Ms. But before you stand, I have some community things too, unless you want to stand for a bit. <laughs> um, but, but first, I want to uh, thank you for the showcase for that, that Reading on the Brain program. Um, Callaway has just proven to elevate in as, as far as through as an elementary school throughout the city. So I'm hopeful that uh, the program does expand throughout the city and um, they're, you know, funding. We need, we need help with funding from the private se sector as well. So please um, try to uh, look up this program and see what we can do financially. Uh, secondly, I also would like to add uh, Cleveland Rudisill to the MoMA silent list. Uh, he uh, played basketball for the University of Baltimore in the 70s and also played for France for 10 years. And uh, he was also honored at, um, in the Hall of Fame with the Maryland General Assembly. So uh, we need a moment of silence for his family as well. And also this afternoon I spent uh, time in fact, my first time, first experience with the members of the Prince George's County uh, Council um, in my duty as first vice president of the Maryland Association of Counties, I will be going through uh, just about every county in this um, state and uh, just sitting down and sharing um, why I think the Maryland Association of Counties is an important um, organization to be a part of as, as well as the National Association of Counties. Um, I was joined there today with our uh, Congressman Steny Hoyer, which is also the majority leader. And um, we just kind of shared and talked about the 2019 session highlights. And also in the highlights is one of our own uh, Chris, uh, Christopher Burnett with um, the, his advocacy and advocacy around the state for, for the human trafficking. So, um, and then the last plug, um, our Ocean City Conference is coming up in summer conference in August and uh, time is of the essence to get on board for that. And now I guess we're ready for the next council meeting of the city council will be held on Monday, June 24th at 5 p.m. And may we have a moment of silence for Donald Hammond, the father of Pete Hammond, Cleveland Rudisill, uh, and the 143 now families of, uh, with the victims of um, homicide and also we continue to pray for the families that are going through the opioid epidemic. Thank you. There being no further business, this concludes the 62nd meeting of the 72nd term of the Baltimore City Council.